That's a good one right now. Yeah. Not gonna your no, it's not. Nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's about average. That was a nice one. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Rob Holman with Northwest Fishman Reports. I'm on my way down to Howard's on the River in Bateros, Washington. We're meeting up with Kyle Jones at Jones Sport Fishing. We're gonna fish for sockeye out of Brewster. We've got a special guest, Jeremy Affel, and some friends from his nonprofit, Generation Alive. John Garisco, all kinds of great stuff. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun show. Keep watching. We got a lot of excitement coming right up. Not too shabby, huh, John? Not too shabby. Good luck on uh, out there in the hole. We'll be handling it. Yeah. <laughs> take care. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate it, man. John, what did you think? Texas a I thought it was horrible. Texas a <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need a redo. <laughs> yeah, if you did another one, you can make a better decision. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> you play football. It's time for the Northwest Fishing Reports. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. With Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Now, it's time to go fishing. After a great night at Howard's on the River, we're here at the Columbia Point Boat Lodge. We met up with Kyle Jones. Kyle, say hello. Hi. Jones Sport Fishing. He's really enthusiastic and happy to be here. <laughs> what do you got for us today? Sockeye. Lots of all right, so we're gonna do some sockeye fishing. We've got Jeremy, the rest of the guys. Kyle, thanks a lot right off the bat for donating this trip to Generation Alive, Jeremy's fundraiser. Absolutely. And thanks again, Craig, and your group here for supporting Jeremy. Yeah. And Generation yeah, Alive, huh? Yeah, we're excited, yeah. man. Good times. Good times out on the river. Right, let's, let's go, go fishing. fishing. What do you think, first fish? Nice. I love it. There it is. Okay. Just hit. Yeah. Got me. Yeah. Swinging at that like I'm a pitcher. That's right. <laughs> uh, pitchers would get that bat would have landed out there. <laughs> that one's gone. Let's get your license filled out. Yeah. And then the straight up slide him over to 
Double. Let me switch on the outside. Here, just keep coming. I'm gonna put two in the net. Actually, no, I'm not, because that one's out. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Duke, sweet minnow. <laughs> That's cute. That was bait for the other fish. Yeah, I was going to say. Is that a coconut? Jeez, no kidding. Are we all there? Are we all on? We're going to so we're gonna have super rods in the water, boys. Still got him on up there? I think so, don't you? Yeah, thanks, man. Like yeah, yeah, look at yours, dude. Like, my eight years. Or, <laughs> 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 oh, 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 still have, there? Oh, yeah, he's yeah. on there. Oh, 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 Try to just swing it over here. That's on that trolling fly, Rob. Oh, we gotta get oh, Is good. that the trolling fly? Yeah, just swing your line over to me. So I don't do nothing? Here, I'm in here. Oh, dude. yeah. You got fish going nuts. We didn't use yeah. a net for that one. Scoop them in. Scoop them in. Nice little run of action there. Keep watching. We've got Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Keep watching everybody cause we're coming back with more! <laughs> <laughs> nice little run of action. Keep watching, we've got more Northwest Fishery Reports right after this. <laughs> Vance just hooked up, the fish got off. That's not uncommon. No. No, I mean, when we're sockeye fishing, we, we probably lose half of them. I mean, if, you, if you're getting half of them, you're doing good. They're similar to kokanee. You're well, like, they're the same thing, yeah. They're, I mean, kokanee and, and sockeye are the same fish. Kokanee are just landlocked, so same problems. Kokanee is infamous for the soft mouth. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if it's necessarily the soft. I mean, they have a pretty soft mouth. These things, they're hard enough because they're in fresh water a little bit more. They're not as soft. But they're able to flip around so fast and turn circles and get back on themselves and with barbless hooks, it's just gone. Right, right. It, it makes for a fun fight when you're bringing them in. Oh yeah. But you're gonna lose some fish. Absolutely, yeah. So don't feel bad, Vance. All right. <laughs> 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 not Rob does it though. <laughs> I'm not allowed apparently to lose one though. Oh. Cause you won't let me forget. <laughs> I definitely won't. <laughs> Hey, Sockeye Salmon, Northwest Fishing Reports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we like that. Blood in the boat. <laughs> Blood in the boat. Your technique here, you're not using downriggers. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're just using lead droppers. Um, big, long, you know, four foot leader to our dodger off of a lead, six ounce lead. And we're fishing anywhere between now uh, like 18, 19 feet and 30 feet on the line counters. Let's us run more rods. We can run six, seven rods around a boat and lets everybody get involved and catching fish and having fun. Can you show us that in a little bit? Yeah, we'll, we'll go over the whole setup here and uh, get it all figured out so everybody knows exactly what we're doing. He's good. He's there. Yep. He's oh, bouncy. Yeah, he Hold been pretty good. So he's oh, bouncy. Yeah. Ah, I think we'll be all right right there. I try to surf him over to me and lift straight up. He's waiting for the blooper, blooper reel. Yeah, yeah. He wants thing. me to suffer, right? Pink. Oh, awesome, Rob. Let's get your license filled out. Yep. Get that one dropped back in. Today we've got Craig Perigo with us. Craig, you're joining us because of a fundraiser for Generation Alive. I am. 
and you've supported that organization. Tell us a little bit about how you became aware of Generation Alive. Um, so, so I met uh, Jeremy a couple of years ago, and then uh, we also are, are fairly good friends with Marty Gonzalez. Okay. And we sort of really started talking to Marty about it, my wife and I, and he would sort of explain a little bit about what Generation Alive was about. And at one point he asked us, because uh, you had that Ignite event, and said, so you guys want to come to this? It's a pretty good time. So we did. Um, food was great. Uh, we got to see and meet a lot of bunch of people out of Generation Alive, and it was a really good time. And then, you know, they were auctioning off items, and so we threw bids out a little bit, and we were lucky enough right. to get this. So yeah. this Priceless is experience. Right. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, that's not the first event uh, in Spokane, Ignite. This has been going on for a while. Yeah, this is, uh, we've been doing it for five or six years now, um, maybe longer, maybe seven. Uh, we do a couple of big events every year, one in, in Spokane, one in San Francisco, and the Ignite event is a pretty big event for us. It's one of our biggest fundraisers, and we have a great turnout. It seems like a lot of community come up, 400 plus people come out for it, and they really surround it. And I think that's one thing about Spokane that we have always appreciated is the fact that the community surrounds things like this. And when they see young people and they see youth, they want to be able to pour their lives, their money, their time, uh, any type of resource that they have back into the young people and I think that's why we thrive so much in in Spokane because of that and things like this I mean even yeah. the outdoors the outdoor stuff, you know, like Northwest Fishing Report has done, you know This is the third one. I think that we've done and um, It's just a good thing because now we're, we're looking at kids not just in a we're not just having people that maybe You know have a lot of money. They want to give to people who don't have a lot of money It's you know outdoorsmen are giving their time and and their opportunity Kyle's been doing it with us for for a long time now, so yeah, uh, we're, we're really excited for this kind of stuff because Spokane is an outdoor outdoorsman type town, and, sure. and uh, getting kids outside is important, and, and uh, people surrounding, you know, kids and go on fishing trips to help raise some money. Man, it's awesome. It's really part of the Northwest, and at the core of Generation Alive, it's a Northwest organization. You've got your San Francisco tie-in, which is part of your growth stuff, yeah. but really, it's about future leaders and youth. It is, and it's about getting kids to understand that there's poverty in every community, uh, and there's pains that poverty causes. And when you can alleviate those pains through acts of compassion, that's called servant leadership. And I think one of the things that we try to do with kids is get them to understand the difference between empathy and compassion. Empathy is like you see something and obviously, oh man, I feel bad for that person. Sure. Compassion is, I don't only really feel bad for that situation, I want to, what can I do to help? And it's the whole love your neighbor as yourself mentality. On my left forum, no, it says no man shall live for himself, and that's kind of my version of that uh, uh, of that verse. Is is just like, look, I don't want to live for just me. I want to live for other people. I don't think I'm here to be me and only me and only help me out. I'm here to try to succeed in any area that I can succeed in, or I've been gifted to succeed in, whatever that is, and then try to help other people succeed through acts of compassion. And when I see something, if I'm if I'm hungry, I, I want to eat. So if I see people are hungry, why would I want them to have something to eat? And, kind of how we came up with a lot of our initiatives. Sure. And you came to this uh, philosophy while you were playing in the big leagues. Yeah, like it was just a thing for me. And at a major league level, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, one thing we do is have financial resource. Obviously, professional sports, you know, you, you, you're able to, to make good money. And I had an opportunity, you know, it's so busy where I'm gone from February to sometimes November and I have three months in an off season. I can't really always give back to like, time in the communities because then those three months are really important to make some gone so much during the year to be with my family. Sure. So a lot of what ball players will do is they'll try to financially support it and learn about the organization. And so we did a lot of that and, and that's even what I do with GA. I have a great staff. Marty Gonzalez is, 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 is an yeah. awesome CEO. We have a Darren Duties, a phenomenal uh, guy with the programs and, and so we have we have a lot of good staff members that, that take care of GA right. and uh, and so I'm very very excited for that because I wasn't always able to be there right and so uh, having a staff like that's very very important and even now uh, I bounce between Texas and Washington a little bit throughout the year so having a staff here that just loves the community is very 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 important well there's bright things on the horizon for GA I hear yeah 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 we, we've expanded in San Francisco we have an office and where you've got a, we've got a high, we're about to hire someone to run that area down there, and so we're getting moving and shaking a little bit with, with, with stuff, and I'm sure we'll expand other places as we as we continue to move forward. If people want to get a hold of Generation Alive, contribute with time, money, resources, how do they do that? They're pretty simple, generationalive.org. You can follow Generation Alive on Instagram, Facebook, 
uh, and just follow what they're doing and then obviously the website will tell you exactly the events coming up they'll tell you where you can give how you can donate your time volunteer scenarios where what kind of things we're doing with with kids and in, 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 in the in the action teams and just gives everybody all the info they're gonna need generationalive.org and you can check that out awesome everybody check it out let's get back to some fishing I think this is awesome. Pretty neat setting, isn't it? This is awesome. Yeah. Fishing is awesome. Sockeye is awesome. They're biting like crazy, except for my pole. <laughs> That's another one. Dude. Oh, it bounced one time. Pole, it went like that. We're just looking for 30%, Jeremy. 30%. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm down to 33 now. <laughs> so. You need to put that bait on there, Nitro, dude. Coming off. Yeah. <laughs> All the bait you put on there keeps coming off. <laughs> this one's biting me a little bit more. I don't know. This one's bouncing me pretty good. No, Almost Hermes is still there. Yeah. Oh, good. I was gonna say. I don't There's lose. Bingo. I don't lose more than two. Yeah, you're not bro. Going for it. <laughs> I'll find a way to keep mine on, even though I got to go through eight people fishing lines to keep it on. I kept mine on. I just, I just dragged him to everybody else's hook to make sure he'd stay on at some point. Yeah. They all had fish on though, Jeremy. So, but you got yours. Yeah, I got mine. My bad. <laughs> you guys gotta learn how to set those hooks a little better. Good. <laughs> Finally. I put, see, I got the good bait out yeah, for you. Yeah, you say, that you see, you hooked a good bait on. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's, I'm telling, it's, it's not the fisherman, it's the fishing guy. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, obviously. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real nice socket. <laughs> Yeah. You were talking earlier about that they're good eating. It's yeah. It's gonna have a slight taste to it. Yeah. 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 Like, man, it's saltier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's taking off on you, John. Try to lift him up. On the edge, John. Yeah. Hey. hey. Did you lose it? No, it's right here. Oh, it is on it. Swing it over to me. Hi, guys. All right. Woo All right. Kyle, <laughs> you got a little bit different setup. Yep. A lot of guys are out here with downriggers. You do something different. Yeah, we, uh, we don't run downriggers. We basically have just your basic Columbia River trolling setup, the way we fish the whole rest of the way down the river. Um, slider to a six ounce lead ball, attached to a long, long bumper section to a dodger and then a real short leader to your gear. This, the, this section is pretty common, but we just use the no downriggers. It's way easier. We can all run rods. You know, you're not having to lean out over the side of the boat every time to re-get your gear and then so what do you mean we can all run rods? Uh, is that we've got we're fishing six rods right yeah, now? Yeah. And because of this setup, you don't got downriggers in the way. Yeah. Or well, in the yeah, zone. we can get more rods right into the same zone. We don't have to have them spread out as much. Um, and it's just super easy to bring it up, rebate, dump it right back down instead of having to bring a ball up, pull it in, slide, hook it on, send everything back down. You know. Very cool. Simple. Yeah, we don't have to overthink anything. When we're only fishing, you know. 18 or 10 to you know maybe 30 feet deep so it's not it's not like we're fishing real deep okay so that's our depths today 10 to 18 feet we're in 60 feet of water a lot of the time. yeah exactly yeah so they're in that upper half yeah these fish are a lot of times up they change throughout the day and sometimes you know every once in a while you'll find them deeper but other than that it's pretty uh they're usually up fairly high if you were targeting sockeye elsewhere this is how you'd start out i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't do anything different Roger that. Now you do have a couple different offerings, everything from shrimp 
did some Arctic fox trolling flies. Yep. Yeah, and that those Arctic fox trolling flies have caught a couple of fish for us today. Great. Uh, anything else? Any other setups? Any no. Other? Pretty basic. Saw a spinner blade on something. Yep. We got some spinner blades too. Cool. You know, kind of a system that just prawn spinner. But yeah. A lot of them are low profile. There's not a lot of stuff here. You're doing no. Yeah. Same. It's it just needs to be real simple. It's just a little bit of crystal flash tied on a number four treble hook and a chunk of shrimp. All right. You know, don't don't overthink it. Keep things simple. That's it. Come on, buddy. Pretty cool. There we go. Nice sock guy. Keep him coming. Uh, All right, limit, man. Limit, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, we had a pretty successful day. Yeah, it was good, man. Good day fishing. Not bad for sleeping in and getting on the water and <laughs> right. yeah. getting fish and shoot, it's lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. perfect timing. Kyle, if guys want to take a trip out with you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, the best way is to go on our website, jonesportfishing.com, and uh, check us out there. You can book online or uh, we've got all of our phone numbers on there listed so you can give us a call. If you call all of them, you probably get a hold of one of us. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just uh, get on our website and get us booked. Hey, for Northwest Fishing Reports, I'm Rob Holman. We'll see you on the water and online. Northwest Fishing Report limit. We need one more for a boat limit. The only one that doesn't have it is Rob, because he's lost six. <laughs> That's exactly what I was hoping for. Thanks, man. <laughs> NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more.